Welcome to Chamber Exchange, a TV show. My name is Tim Murray, President and CEO of the Worcester Regional Chamber of Commerce. And Chamber Exchange, a TV show, is an opportunity for you, our viewers, to, to hear our, from our guests who talk about issues of economic development and job creation uh, here in the region, as well as issues of public policy. Uh, the Chamber Exchange TV show would not happen, but for our sponsors, and I want to thank Bank Hometown and the Worcester Railers Hockey Club, who are on a winning streak and have a number of games coming up at the Worcester DCU Center. So get down to the DCU Center, watch some great family-friendly hockey with the Worcester Railers. Uh, thrilled to have with us in this segment uh, Jim Leary, who's the Vice President of Government and Community Affairs at the UMass Memorial Healthcare System. Welcome, Jim. Thank you, Tim. Good to be here. Uh, Jim, you know, UMass Memorial Healthcare System been in the news uh, over the last couple of years, perhaps more than usual, uh, fighting the COVID battle, front line, uh, dealing with this crisis and, and providing first class health care to people throughout the region. But also from an economic development point of view, the UMass Memorial Healthcare System employs well over 15,000 people, the, the single biggest employer. Uh, in, in Worcester County. So important for lots of reasons, but uh, there's been some discussion uh, that's been coming out of Boston recently about uh, Mass General Brigham, a major institution which has been, uh, you know, provides great care, but been cited over the years as being a major factor in healthcare costs escalating here in the state. They've got a proposed merger, or excuse me, a proposed expansion on the table that would include coming to uh, Westboro, uh, Woburn and an expansion in Westwood and uh, a lot of concern about that uh, here locally. There is a lot of concern um, and, it, and it's important I guess to put it in perspective. And I'll start off. We, we have nothing negative to say about Mass General Brigham in the sense that they're colleagues, they're, they're an excellent um, clinical system. However, uh, when you look at it and you mentioned how big UMass Memorial is, we, Mass General Brigham is 11 times larger. It is, in fact, not only is it the largest system in Massachusetts, it's larger than the next four systems combined. Um, three times larger than, than the number two system, which, which is um, Beth Israel Leahy. So with that come the largest prices. And, and they are primarily a commercially driven system, meaning if you look at the proportion of um, people that they serve who are commercially insured, it's higher than most other systems. We're a safety net system, so we have a very large proportion of um, public payer or uninsured, people who are on mass health, people on Medicare, people who are uninsured. So there's a deep concern. In order for safety net systems like us to be able to, to provide the level of care that we need to provide, we have to counterbalance the losses from that safety net care. Mass health pays like 65 cents on the dollar or so um, in terms of the cost of care. So every time we take care of a mass health patient, which is our mission, we lose money and we need to balance that with our commercial revenue. Um, and what we're concerned with is that when Mass General Brigham comes in, by design, by their own words, this is an attempt to expand their commercial market share. What that will do for safety net hospitals is to create a great deal of fiscal um, uncertainty and challenges. And frankly, it, it can threaten the services that we provide. Ser services and jobs. And <clears throat> so really what you're talking about is, you know, they are, they're generally not providing care to, to vulnerable populations, low income populations that are oftentimes on different government subsidized programs with a margin of, of where your, reimb your reimbursement for services is, is you lose money. Yeah, that's correct. And I don't want to say they don't provide it. They do. But if you look at the proportion that they provide in comparison to us, in comparison to Boston Medical Center, in comparison to any safety net systems, it's a lower proportion. Um, and, and that's where we have our challenges fiscally. You mentioned the Attorney General's report. Uh, they talked about that the motivation, you know, from some of their own documents that she ob ob obtained in her review of this is that this is clearly you know, Mass General Brigham decision to expand market share, make more money. Um, but there's an element of this that uh, it also kind of includes if, if someone's at an outpatient facility in Westboro, if they need a higher level of care or hospitalization, they're probably going to be referred to the hospitals in Boston as opposed to uh, Central Mass or in it, Worcester it, County. That's correct. That, that in, and that's where the biggest cost driver <coughs> is on this. So we're, we're in a regulatory review process where 
the state, the Department of Public Health, is supposed to, um, through its regulations, consider what the impact is on what they call aggregate health care costs in the state. So obviously aggregate is, is the total health care cost. The Health Policy Commission, which, which has a, a great degree of expertise in this area, studied the proposal and, and they were very frank in, in their assessment where they said, look, we can only look at a subset of the services because that's where we have the best data. Just looking at that subset of services, they estimate that this could be upwards of a $260 million shift in revenue from safe, primarily safety net hospitals to Mass General Brigham and that it would increase um, health insurance premiums by approximately $90 million. Again, that's a conservative estimate based upon a subset. And, and just it, what that means, you know, as, again, we, on a regular basis, at representing 2,000 member businesses and organizations, healthcare costs are a huge challenge every year. And, and if, if insurance premiums are going up, that's a real cost. It, yeah, and it, you know, it's interesting. Um, so it, as you know, there, there's a coalition, a statewide coalition with, I think it's now at least 24 members who have expressed concern about these expansions, not only Westboro, but, but the other ones as well. And it's really interesting because it, it's, it's a bunch of groups that aren't always aligned. And so as you know, there are multiple chambers of commerce across the state. There are also unions, there are human service providers, and there are healthcare advocacy organizations who are looking at it, you know, and the unions are looking at it in a very similar way as the chambers in terms of the costs of their members. And, and how this can increase costs for members. And then um, health equity is obviously a major concern in terms of the impact on safety nets and what that means for them being able to carry out their missions. Yeah, and one of the things that the Health Policy Commission you know, report said is, similar to how we started the show, you know, MGB has not, Mass General Brigham has not had a great track record in kind of staying within the, the target levels in terms of controlling costs, which affects the whole it, system. Yeah, and, and so, you know, if you look at it, so Marlboro Hospital, which would, is part of the UMass Memorial System and would be the most impacted by the Westboro expansion. Marlboro Hospital, according to state data, the, the, is the lowest cost hospital in the entire state if you look at inpatient costs. UMass Memorial Medical Center is one of six academic medical centers in the state. Those are the places that provide the highest, you know, most specialized care we are the most affordable and the lowest cost academic medical center. So if you think of it, you, you, you transition from care at the lowest cost hospital and then the high acuity care being sent to the lowest cost academic medical center to going into the highest cost system in the state and the care being sent to MGB's two academic medical centers, both of which by far are the highest cost academic medical centers in the state. So inevitably that, that drives up costs. So the Health Policy Commission has expressed, you know, their deep concerns about this, uh, both the merger and MGB's ability to <coughs> control costs. This decision on the expansion now goes, goes to the Baker Polito administration, correct? It does. So it, it's the Department <coughs> of Public Health and, and um, sort of a, an arm of the Department of Public Health called the Public Health Council. So um, DPH now is in the process of writing up its recommendation to the Public Health Council, and then this will be an item on the agenda of the Public Health Council at one of their monthly meetings, probably in either March or April. It depends upon the exact timing. So we're hopeful. I mean, frankly, all we're asking for is to apply the law as written, apply the regulations as written, look at the aggregate cost of this proposal and its impact on health equity, and we think that based on that analysis, it should be rejected. And we just have a minute left, Jim. I also know, you know that Speaker Ron Mariano has also weighed in about his real concerns about uh, this trend with, with expansion and MGB. He's been very outspoken. Right? You know, Speaker Mariano, as you know, represents Quincy. Um, a number of years ago, Quincy Hospital closed. He's deeply concerned with the impact on community hospitals, and he's always been a strong advocate for community hospitals. So whether it's Melrose Wakefield Hospital that's impacted by the Woburn expansion, or a Marlboro hospital impacted by the, the Westboro expansion, um, the speaker has deep concerns. Yeah. Well, uh, uh, you know, we, we know that hospitals, these co you know, community hospitals, play a huge role in providing care and are the economic development engines, in, in realistically, in many regions of the state. And so uh, hopefully, uh, 
you know, Governor Baker and, and, and his uh, this, you know, leaders as they're deliberating understand both the health care uh, impact as well as the economic development impact uh, if this expansion is just allowed to continue. That's exactly what we're hoping for. Good. Well, thanks for being with us. We're going to wrap up this segment of Chamber Exchange and we'll be right back. These days, you've got your hands full in life. That's why we help you bank simply and securely with tools like Face ID and Touch ID. It's why we make it easy to make purchases on the go and get cash back while you're at it. Why we help you quickly deposit checks wherever you are. And it's why we lend a hand with sending and receiving money right from your phone. So even when you're on the move, you can manage your finances. Bank Hometown. Unlock your potential. Being associated with the Railers and being a part has been awesome, and it's been a lot of fun. I think my students' initial reactions is my favorite part. Uh, they, their eyes get really wide, and they're in awe. And then you have the excitement of hockey, and you have that anticipation in the air. You know, the crowd getting into it, it's, it's fun. 